If you're familiar with the series, you can probably guess who the so-called breakaway monk is. We've met a monk before who has a tendency to break everything he touches. It'd be nice if we could avoid him, but someone needs his services. As we begin, Sister Bertrill is out flying and Carlos is out driving. Carlos, wait for me! <laughs> well, that was very good. You should go in for TV commercials. Oh, yeah, let the convent send Tanko put you in the driver's seat. <laughs> well, when you are number one, you don't have to try this hard. Pop culture references aren't a new thing. People have been doing it for as long as humans have had any kind of culture. We got two of them there. Hertz was the number one car rental company, and their slogan was, let Hertz put you in the driver's seat. Avis was the second largest company, so their slogan was, we're number two, we try harder. They kept it for years in spite of all the popular jokes about trying hard to go number two. Well, the wind was dying down. I was looking for an emergency landing. You're in luck today. I'm on my way to the convent. I have to see the Reverend Mother. Oh, about what? Well, my income tax return has been audited. And you want us to pray for you? No. I need a statement listing all the contributions I made to the convent last year. I've been audited multiple times because they seem to love going after those of us who have nothing. The nice thing about having nothing is there's nothing for them to take. Too bad Carlos hasn't discovered that, but he's a little more into creature comforts than I am. He lives for the action, the glitz, the lights and sounds, and especially the attention. Too bad right now he's got the wrong people's attention. But it's worse than that. Um, Carlos, level with me. Did you do a little padding on your income tax return? Sister, I am an honest man who has the utmost respect for the laws and regulations. And I make up my income tax return like any other law-abiding citizen. In that case, we'll light a candle for you, too. <laughs> I served on a music team in a Catholic church for a year and never got around to asking that question, what are the candles for? What's lighting one for someone supposed to do? I always wondered that, but for some reason while I was there, it never came up. If someone can enlighten me, ha ha, about that, I'd appreciate it. And we saw that smile. Carlos adores Sister Bertrill in spite of everything. How can he not? She's a five foot two bundle of loving energy that constantly pours out in the service of other people. She's vibrant, pleasant, and funny. She's one of those people that instantly attaches herself to your heart and you never want to let go. Bit by bit, she's turning Carlos into a better person and no matter how much he protests, he likes that. He enjoys growing as a person. Before he met her, he never dreamed he would, but when she forced him to give it a try, guess what? He likes it! Hey, Mikey! Oh, I see. Well, uh, I will be very happy to send the statement as soon as we have it prepared. Thank you, Reverend Mother. She said that with so much confidence, they can probably get it to him today, right? And we'll uh, wrap it around a St. Christopher medal. I know I'll be sorry I asked, but why St. Christopher? Well, he's the patron saint of travelers, in case they send you up the river. <laughs> she also does stand-up comedy. How can you not love such a versatile servant of the Lord? Sister Betrill, you should not tease him. People always seem to be so nervous when they become involved with the Internal Revenue Service. <laughs> There's no need if your records are in order. Yes, that is exactly why I am so nervous. In esoteric accounting terms, the records are a disaster. They'll need to bring in a professional to sort it all out and find what Carlos needs. Ask Brother Paul? Brother Paul? Brother Paul? The last time Brother Paul was here, he nearly demolished the place. Saying he's accident prone is like saying the Chicago fire was a barbecue that got a little out of hand. All the sisters are hard at work trying to Paul-proof the place. <laughs> Why are they building a brick wall right there? 
to give that gentleman something to do. That's the only reason I see. Sister Bertrill picks up Brother Paul from the airport and brings him to the convent in the good old station wagon. Ah, well, certainly is nice to be back in the convent. Don't, don't move, Brother Paul. Don't move. Something wrong, sister? No, I just wanted to open the door for you. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, it's quite all right. I'll get out the other side. Uh, stay where you are. And we have our running gag for the episode. She's trying so hard to keep him from touching anything, she keeps crashing and burning instead. Basically, she's trying to keep him from breaking anything by breaking everything for him. It has its moments, but to be honest, it's way overdone. Sister Anna, look who's here. Sister Anna? Brother Paul! <laughs> That was one of the better moments. Well, you certainly do have a lot of safety precautions since the last time I was here. Well, you know the old slogan, watch out for the other guy. <laughs> watch out for the other guy was a defensive driving slogan. The commercials subtly told people, yeah, we know you're a good driver, but a lot of the people out there aren't, so be on the lookout. Watch out for the other guy. That was actually how they said it. We know you're okay, but that other guy, he's questionable. Look out. It was a wonderful play on people's egos, and it was very successful. To this day, I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or not. The cottage is now stripped to the bare bones. Nothing breakable, flammable, or able to trip someone. It's perfect for him. He doesn't understand the remodeling. In fact, there's a lot he doesn't understand. Well, excuse me. Sister. Where are you going? I'm going out. Well, that's uh, all right. There's no need for that. Just tell me what you want. The bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. You stay here and I'll go pee for you. Uh, may I uh, ask a personal question, Reverend Mother? Oh, yes, of course, Brother Paul. Is there something wrong with Sister Betrayal? She certainly is jumpy. He already talked freely about all the damage he did in the cottage. We know about the rest of it, and he wonders why she's jumpy. Every time he comes out of the cottage, all the sisters bless themselves and start praying. Yeah, they're really lovely. You know all my roses seem to die? Well, some of us have green thumbs, and some of us are all thumbs. I haven't met the plant yet that wouldn't die on me. I like to say I have a brown thumb. Why didn't you tell me you were building a brick wall? Would you believe it slipped my mind? What's left of it? <laughs> Do a lot of brickwork well, around the monastery. Never mind, Brother Paul. I wouldn't I want you to get so... <laughs> and now we know why we're building a brick wall there, so she can fall through it. Uh, Sister Patrill, I uh, hate to say this, but you are accident prone. And I would know because I used to be that way. You used to be that way? You mean you're not anymore? I guess not. I haven't had an accident since I arrived at the country. I wonder why. In spite of everything, he's got all the books, receipts, and other matters sorted out. Sister Bertrill is delivering the report to Carlos. Hello. Yes, this is Carlos Ramirez. Uh, this is Mr. O'Reilly of the Internal Revenue Service. I wonder if we might change the date of our meeting. He wants to change it to today, more or less right now. Since Carlos's accountant is out of town and Brother Paul is doing the honors, he says, today is fine. Meet me at the convent and we'll get this taken care of. Remember all those things I mentioned that Carlos is into? Another one is image. He likes to project a certain picture of himself depending on the situation. He figures this guy wouldn't dream of accusing him of dishonesty if he's doing the audit in the convent in front of a bunch of nuns. You might be wondering why we're meeting here. It had crossed my mind, yes. The answer is, the guy who has the paperwork is here and everyone involved is afraid to let him go anywhere else. But Carlos has a better one. Oh, I know that it's a little unusual. But you see, I do so much work for the convent. I get involved in things like the catechism school, donating money to repair the chapel, seeing that there is enough milk for the children at school, running the bingo game at the bazaar, Providing books for the children. Senior Ramirez. Yes? 
The Internal Revenue Service is non-sectarian. Or not. Mr. O'Reilly isn't impressed by the convent or Carlos's shameless self-promotion. Was there ever a more perfect picture of the mean old man than Charles Lane? It's to be expected that he was the opposite in real life, a kind man and a true gentleman. We've seen him many times, and one of my favorite roles of his was when he played the constable in The Music Man with Robert Preston and Shirley Jones. This wasn't his first time playing an IRS agent either. He had a similar role in the 1938 film, You Can't Take It With You. He excelled at being a character actor, and that look of his was always in demand, so he sometimes had more work than he knew what to do with. He kept working well into his 90s, and finally died in 2007 of natural causes. He was 102 and was working on filming a documentary at the time. In many ways, I think I want to be like him, especially the living to be over 100 part. In any case, while Carlos is realizing his little image ploy isn't working, Sister Bertrill has gone to fetch Brother Paul and the paperwork. Boy, this wind is pretty... Oh, no. Three, two, one... While she flies around collecting runaway receipts, Brother Paul takes what he has to Mr. O'Reilly. Now, have you brought the receipts from the convent? Oh, yes. Thank well, you. Uh, not all of them. Not all of them? Yes, well, uh, the rest of them are being gathered together at this moment. Ay, ay, ay. Tell them you lost your hold and the papers blew away, knothead. Everybody over the age of 10 has done that at least once, including Mr. O'Reilly. If you give him the whole story, he might be willing to bend and give Carlos another day. Instead, he'll start picking things apart while Sister Jacqueline occasionally comes running in with more recovered documents. It's long and not especially interesting. Mr. Lane gives his usual excellent performance, in fact, everybody does, but the material isn't that exciting or amusing. Well, the first item we question were your entertainment deductions. Well, when you run a casino like mine, you do a lot of entertaining. It's all recorded here in this diary. I don't think a diary is what he's looking for unless receipts are stapled to the pages. You bring a book like this into a convent? <laughs> Sorry, wrong diary. <laughs> The only part of that that wasn't predictable was the part where Carlos keeps his conquest diary with his financial records. Meanwhile, Sister Bertrill is still conducting her paper chase. Thank you, sir. Thank you. When Marco ran off the road, he landed in a nice soft haystack. This guy went into a nice gentle pond. Amazing how nobody falls off right there on the hard street. It's a good thing. A fella could get hurt that way. Mr. Ramirez, for a $23,000 entertainment deduction, you're going to have to produce more receipts than this. If you'll just be patient, sir, I'm sure we can get them all together. Say you, Ramirez. More receipts. <laughs> May I ask what is going on? <laughs> There was the sudden gust of wind. Well, I hardly think... Don't you love people who ask you a question and then interrupt the answer? Doesn't it just make you want to give them a nice, gentle pat on the cheek? I'm going to find substantiation of your entertainment deductions in this little pile. He most likely had his mind made up before he ever got there. In that regard, this performance is frighteningly realistic. I don't know what you're trying to pull, Ramirez, but you're not going to get away with it. Please lower your voice. They are sisters praying. I hope they're praying for you. Sure, I'm Begora, a nice Irish Catholic like you is not going to think that I'm going to lie in a house of worship. My father happens to be an Episcopalian minister, and he comes from the north of Ireland. In other words, he's a Protestant. So doing this at a Catholic convent probably prejudiced him even more. Anybody who's got a monk as a tax man and a convent for a front is trying to hide something. You'll be hearing from us, Ramirez. I can tell you now, it's going to go hard on you. 
Carlos needs to file an appeal immediately because this guy is doing the job they trained him to do. The first class they take is called Being a Jerk 101. Brother Paul explains to Carlos what happened. Why didn't you tell Mr. O'Reilly all that? He tried. O'Reilly shouted him down. I think I've got them all. I think you are too late. Yes, the revenue agent just left. Now, what are you doing? Excuse me while I act like an interceptor plane. Unlike you two, she isn't just going to throw her hands up and say, well, crap, we lost. She's not licked yet, even if you are. Mr. O'Reilly! Mr. O'Reilly, stop a minute! <laughs> rest of Carlos Ramirez's receipts. They may be a little dirty, but they're all there. And it'll prove to you that all of his deductions are legitimate and that he's a wonderful friend of the convent Santanko. You can take those back to wherever you're staying and examine them at your leisure. What are you doing? Bless you, sister. Bless Senior Ramirez. <laughs> bless his tax return. <laughs> and bless me. <laughs> and by the way, how does he go about converting? He never heard of any Episcopalian who can do that. It was nice seeing Rich Little again, but he didn't have much to do this time around. Sister Bertrill got all the visual gags while he stood by wondering why. The whole episode just felt awkward. We never got a rhythm going and the story was bland and predictable. The high point was Charles Lane in every scene he was in. We didn't fix any real problems. We didn't leave anybody better than we found them. We really didn't do much of anything. It was all anticipation followed by nothing. I'm not sure what was going on with the show's writing at this time, but it's all over the place. Somebody has forgotten how we got here and now they're wandering around lost. And the sad truth is, Sister Bertrill is going to have to risk exposing her secret to the world yet again and go find them. I hope she's charging them overtime. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button to let me and YouTube know you want to see more. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the mask here and get signed up so you don't miss a thing because something is always happening here at Irving Zoo. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you later. You don't need to bring in a professional to sort of prof cat that does. Come on. And burning in said, in said, that was one of the, ah! the answer is the guy who, ha okay, stop it. Was there ever a more pick, 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 p